Children of the night, what music they make. Hello, my trigger happy friends. My name is Stevie Cade, and thank you for joining me for this very special review. So the season of love is upon us. It is Valentine's Day, or at least close to it, because I'm not sure if I'm going to upload this the night before Valentine's Day or the day of. But, I don't know. It is also the 90 year anniversary that the movie Dracula was released in the United States. And I, for one, am a huge Lugosi fan. If you did not know that, I'm surprised. Well, maybe not too surprised. I don't really talk about it too much. But Lugosi, all the way. Vampira, the true lady of the night. Elvira, your ripoff. I also, believe this or not, I actually have a Bella Lugosi doll, or action figure, sorry guys, right here. Yes, it's an actual Bella Lugosi action figure. And oddly enough, it says ages to four, ages four to 104 on the package. And I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe they're just being funny. Maybe not. I'm gonna put this back. So without further ado, let's review the movie Dracula. There are many things to like about this movie, especially if you're like me and you enjoy the original monster movies of Universal. So let's dive into what I like about this film. First and foremost, we're going to say the set designs. The set designs are incredible and quite grand. Just the interior designs themselves are so big and intimidating. Like, I couldn't imagine being on a set that big, especially in 1931. This is very impressive. I feel like this is held in a real castle. But it actually was not. It was actually a set built by Universal, and it was so grand, as a matter of fact, that Universal kept this set up for about a decade later, using it over and over again in many different films. Secondly, Bela Lugosi himself. This man has presence. He demands your attention when he's on screen. He comes across as very haunting, alluring, very seductive, if you will. You can tell that he loved doing this role. And his history tells us that this is true. He loved this role so much, he was buried in his Dracula costume. Yes, that's a fact. He was buried in his Dracula costume. Not in this one in the movie, but he had many others and he was buried in one of those. But he took this role so seriously, actually more seriously than any other actor on set. In my research for this, I was reading that the actors were not thinking... Uh, were thinking that this was not going to be a great movie. So they didn't really take the role seriously, but Bela Lugosi, on the other hand, would walk around in character, shrouding himself in his cape and saying, I am Dracula. I am Dracula. He was Dracula in his mind. And that comes across very clear on screen. Also, if you notice, Bela Lugosi does not blink at all. Anytime that he's on camera, he does not blink. This was a conscious decision on his part to add to the overall eeriness of Dracula. And that's just another detail that Bela Lugosi added because he loved this character so much. Another character that I really enjoyed is Ramfeld. Specifically his development after his transformation. He deals with empathy for the dead. He seems to be dealing with depression, confusions, feelings of abandonment. Master, you've come back. Please don't ask me to do that. Please. Please. And all of these leading up to his demise at the hands of Dracula, the person he was trying to serve. And right before he was getting killed, spoiler alert, he begged for his life. He begged Dracula to keep him alive. Why? Not so he doesn't die. Not because he wants to live, you know, to have a great life or anything. He actually doesn't really seem to enjoy his life. He doesn't want to die with all the blood he has on his hands, which are a direct result of Dracula. He is the most tortured victim of Dracula in this movie. I can't die with all those lines on my conscience! All that blood on my hands! Ah! Ah! 
So yeah, Ramfield uh, with Dracula is one of my top favorite characters for that reason. But there is one more character that I absolutely love, and that's Van Helsing. The scientist Van Helsing. The good Van Helsing. I've never been a big fan of all these movies, like with vampires and werewolves, post Blade. When Blade came out, which don't get me wrong, I like Blade. I'm not dissing Blade whatsoever. I am very aware that after Blade came out, just seems like if you're a mythological creature of some kind, then you are also a martial arts master and are draped in leather, which is okay in, in its own little world. But this Van Helsing is a scientist. He defeats Dracula with his mind. Dracula is scared of him because Dracula feeds off the weak-minded, and Van Helsing is not that. And I also have one more character to talk about here, but this isn't really like character development. This isn't you know, uh, the mythology of this character, but fucking Martin. Martin the Orderly. This guy, just, I, I like him. He's a good comedic relief. If they do a remake of this particular Dracula, I think Tom Hardy would be perfect to play the role of Martin. I, I just do. I, I don't know why. I don't know whatever. It'd be a good extended cameo. So Martin, you get a shout out on my What I Like list. They're all crazy except you and me. Sometimes I have me doubts about you. Yes. Now lastly on my what I like list is the music, or lack thereof. I almost didn't include this because the lack of use of music in this movie is not like a creative decision. It was not something they sat around and said, hmm, yes, that could be more impactful if we didn't have music. So it's not really something I can critique on, but then I realized that this is film trigger and we're not fucking movie critics here we just talk about shit that we like and don't like and whatever and you hopefully you guys enjoy watching me talk shit but i personally enjoy when movies shelve the music you know to enhance certain scenes or what have you but if you notice in this movie there absolutely is no music unless they're in a situation where music would be playing as an actual like ambient background music like when they're at the opera house and the reason for this is because sound was very new to movies at this point and at the time the studios and directors didn't want people to get confused of why music would be playing unless it was actually playing you know like in the movie like again when they're at the opera and you know you have the orchestra there that would actually be playing so the only music you hear in this movie is at the opening and ending credits and when they're at the opera house which i think is cool it actually adds a haunting element to this movie moving right along with what i'm on the fence about when it comes to this film and I'm on the fence with Dracula, in a sense. I, I know I've been going on and on about Bela Lugosi and his performance, and I do not take back what I said. His performance is magical. But Dracula himself, I don't think the character showed us what Dracula's full potential is. At first, I thought maybe this was a studio decision because they just expected you to have already read the book and now here's the movie version of things that you already know so we don't have to go in grave detail about it. But then I actually, in my research, I learned that this movie started filming right after the Great Depression hit. So instead of doing an actual adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula, which they originally wanted to do, they went with the lesser expensive Hamilton Dean stage play. Which makes a lot of sense, because this movie does play out like a play. And that's going to segue into what I don't like about this film. And that's the fact that it does seem like a play. It seems a little too much like they just didn't quite know how to movie yet. But some of this movie just comes across as stage presence, which stage presence is a very magical thing when you're there in person on stage, but comes across a little ridiculous when you're watching it in movie form. The stage to screen translation just doesn't work very well. At certain times, everyone just seems a little too dramatic, um, specifically Remfield uh, when he's doing his whole raving maniac laugh. <laughs> That's that's kind of comical. On stage, I can see that being a little bit more menacing, but you know, watching it in film, especially 90 years after the movie came out, it just comes across as you know, kind of ridiculous. And it becomes a prime example of what I'm talking about. Another thing I didn't like about this movie was its ending. It was very sudden. <laughs> I mean, literally, Dracula is running away from all these people, and then he decides to go sit in his coffin and go to sleep. 
in the middle of this chase. So they easily find him. And then they kill him off screen. And then the credits roll. Uh, okay. Like, there's no no great battle. That's it. The, the credit fucking rolls. You, you hear, ooh. And, and that's, that's it. He, he's dead, I guess. Those are what I don't like, but added on to what I don't like is typically my petty points. And I have a couple of petty points here. At the beginning, Dracula thanks Ramfield for keeping his visit a secret. But this motherfucker had just told everybody in town where he was going and who he was seeing. So, Renfield, you, sir, are a liar. Maybe that's why Dracula decided to torture you. Mina begging and pleading with Van Helsing to explain to her boyfriend what is happening to her, why she needs to leave, why she can't stay with him because she might be responsible for his death. Please, Van Helsing, as a scientist, explain to him the facts. Well, as Mina is pleading all this, Van Helsing literally just gets up and walks away no explanation fucking savage van helsing you know i think that's another reason why i like you he's like oh this bitch i ain't even listening to this bitch still a petty point though <laughs> so hopefully when you go watch this movie you'll notice that and giggle like i do and lastly on my petty points is dracula's coffins like you know below his dwelling they're very just unceremoniously strung about. Um, typically in a Dracula movie, it's all like super gaudy, you know? A whole bunch of cryptic art that leads to Dracula's coffin that's in the perfect lighting and it's a whole big event. Not here, they're literally just boxes of wood sitting underground like in dirt and it just, in, yeah, they're just in the basement. Hey Dracula, where should we put the coffins? Does it look like I give a shit? <laughs> Overall, I'm personally a sucker for movies like these, and not just movies like these, but specifically Bela Lugosi movies. I just think he has a phenomenal presence, and I like his story. And yes, I think he's better than Boris Karloff. I think Bela Lugosi knew he was better than Boris Karloff. Fuck you! Karloff does not deserve to smell my shit! You wanna fight me? Go in the comments below. Let's discuss. But the movie definitely has its issues, and most of these issues is because, as I said before, studios just didn't quite know how to movie yet. So, um, I can definitely see this being a an issue translating with modern audiences. You can tell they had missteps due to their inexperience, and a fairly shallow presentation of storytelling. So, you're either going to love it as a fan of this era of movies like I am, or you're probably just not going to like it. But as for me, I mean, I almost want to give this movie two grades. If it was the 1930s and this movie was just being released and I went and saw it in theaters, I would give this movie an A+. Plus all around. Oh my god, this is movie magic. This is awesome. But in modern times, this movie, even if you are a fanatic of old school movies like me, I give this movie a solid C. I loved it. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Do yourself a favor. Find Dracula, stream it, watch it on DVD, do whatever, give it a good shot, because it actually is a good story. And if you don't want, if you're not into the old school shit like I am, then check out the remake, the night, the, the one that was made in the 90s with Keanu Reeves, because that one is really good, and I might actually watch that one too. Yeah, it's a really good remake, though. It's very more Bram Stoker's Dracula, like adaptation than what this was i hope you enjoyed the review be sure to check out some more of my videos and as always stay trigger happy my friends peace